how to automatically create a chart whenever you click into a button, create a chart like this, for example. And it doesn't matter if your data set is, is small like this, or if you have a large data set or a data set with a bunch of columns or a data set with a bunch of rows. It doesn't matter the type of your data set. Whenever you click create a chart, the Excel is going to create a chart for you following the steps, the design, the layout that you just create before. So let's find out step by step how can we do it. And the most important thing here with this video, we're going to save a lot of time with Excel with this macro right here. Because imagine every day you have to do the same repetitive task every single day. So you can create a macro or whether create a chart, a formula, a function or create a new spreadsheet, whatever. And then the macro is going to do the work for you. This is the beauty of using a macro in Excel. So let's go step by step and find out how can we do it. To start with, as we're going to need to use a macro in Excel, we can start to enable the developer tab. We, you can click here in the home tab and then in any blank spot, you can right click and customize the ribbon. You can select the option with this new window that's going to be pop out for you. Instead of using popular commands, you can choose main tabs, for example. And here you have the developer tab. You can choose this option and then add and then OK. That way, here we got the developer tab. Now we can go straight to record a macro and that way we can automatically make the, the chart in Excel. But before we do it, let's, make, let's understand what we have here. See that I have here four different sheets, but I'm going to start with the first one. And uh, in this first sheet here, I have a data set where I have as the first column a couple of things. Team 1, 2, 3, and 4. And also, I want you to compare each one of the teams against each other. And I want you to see how much, let's say, the first team got as a result in the first round, and also in the second one, and so on, so on. So I have here the teams, the first round, the second round, and here in the last column, the final result. But if I move on to another sheet, for example, this one right here, as you guys can see, it's uh, something, this sheet right here is larger than the first one. I have here more columns and also I have here more rows. That way we can see that the automatic chart needs to work in any type of uh, data set that we gonna use here. Here in this third spreadsheet, I have another type of data set with just a few rows, but uh, with a lot of different columns. And uh, in this last data set here, in this last spreadsheet, I have just a couple of columns, but a lot of rows. 26 different rows and uh, I need my Excel chart that we're going to automate work properly in any different type of data set. If uh, it can have a, a bunch of columns, a bunch of rows, fewer columns, fewer rows, it's going to need to work. Okay. Let's start here with clicking in the developer tab to record a macro and then I'm going to choose the option record macro. I'm going to click here. I can just do here four different things. The first one is do Give a macro a name. So, for example, create a chart. But instead of using this space in between one word and another, I can't do it. So instead of gonna, I'm gonna use here underscore create underscore a underscore chart. I can also insert here a short key, and uh, whenever I just press the short key in my keyboard, the chart is gonna be automatically create for me. I can also store my macro in a new workbook, this workbook, and so on and so on. I'm going to let the option this workbook. And I also can create here a description. Uh, but I'm going to leave it blank. I can just now click here and OK. And uh, everything that we click, everything that we choose here as a tool that we're going to use, everything that we just click in the keyboard is going to be saved, stored as macro. And uh, when we run this macro, Excel is going to take all these actions that we did and uh, it's going to automatically run for us. The first step that I need you to do here as all my data sets start in the cell A1, I'm going to make sure I select the cell A1. So click in the cell A1. Now I need to do something to select the entire column, not just to the column D, for example, but the entire column that I have to do it dynamic because it's going to be times where my data set contains, let's say, two different columns. But uh, it's also going to be times where my data set have 20 different columns. That way I need to make sure I select, doesn't matter how much, how many columns I have, I need to select all of them. 
To do it, I'm gonna press and hold the Control key, the Shift key, both together, Control and Shift key, and then right arrow key. Now I'm gonna do something similar. I need to select all the rows that I have with the same logic. So Control key, Shift key, and down arrow. That way I select my entire data set. Now I can move on here and click in insert and choose the chart that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna choose the option, the first one, insert column and 2D column, for example, this one right here. But instead of using this standard chart that Excel gives us, I need to make some changes here. Uh, the design, the layout, I need to change. The first thing that I can start with is clicking here in the chart design and choose a new design, for example, like this one right here that I like the most, style 13. I can click here, and as you guys can see, it's a cool style of chart. But you can choose another option too, it doesn't matter, okay? You can choose the, the option that you want to. Another thing that I can do here is the title. I can read it off this title right here. I can read it off these vertical values that I have to the left. And instead of using these vertical values to the left, I want to put the values over the columns. And these grind lines that we have underneath the columns, I can also read it off them. Let me start with the title, for example. So we're going to click here in the chart design. Here to the left, add chart element. And for example, I'm going to choose the option chart title, for example, none. And another thing that I can do is read it off this vertical values to the left, add chart element and access, for example, primary vertical. I can read it off this option. Now I, can, I need to put to insert the values over the columns. I can go here to the data labels and outside end like this, for example. And the last thing that we can do here is read it off these grind lines. So add chart element and grind lines. I can just read it off this option and we're done guys. So this is my final version of the chart and I basically done. So I can click here in the developer tab again and I can stop recording or before we do it, I can click, let's say again in the cell A1 and now I can stop the recording. So I'm going to click here and we are done. I can also delete this chart that I, we just create here together. And to make sure it's working, let me click here in any blank cell, for example, like this. Now I can go to the developer tab, macros, and I can choose here in the list, the macro that we're going to use, that is create a chart, for example. And I can also click here, run. That way, as you guys can see, my chart is already in the screen and it works. Another thing that we can do, instead of just clicking the developer tab, macros, selecting the list, the macro that we're going to use, and then click and run. Instead of doing all these steps, I can just simple create a button. And whenever I click in the button, the chart is automatically pop out in the screen for me. I can do it. It's much, it's much easier. Uh, I'm going to click here, insert illustrations, shapes, and I'm going to choose, for example, a uh, rectangle like this. I'm going to just insert the rectangle right here. I can click inside within the rectangle and just type it in, create a chart, for example. I'm going to select all this text right here. I'm going to increase the font size, for example, 24, 20, 20. I think it's good. I'm going to just align the middle and align, centralize the text. I can click here in this button again, shape format, and I can choose another type of design, like this orange right here, for example. Subtle effect, orange accent too. Okay, I think it's good. Whenever now I click in the button, nothing happens because we need to assign the macro to the button. Right click in the button and then I can go to assign macro. I can choose the option, the macro that I'm gonna need to use, that is create a chart, and click here, okay. Let's see if it's gonna work. Create a chart, I'm gonna click here, click, and yeah, we're done. So the chart is, is done. Whenever I click here, I got a new chart. So I just create here a bunch of new charts. Let's check if it's gonna work to the another sheet that we have here. Because as I said before, it doesn't matter if you just have one sheet um, or if you have 10 sheet, it doesn't matter. But what is important is if you have a data set with maybe here four rows and three columns or four columns and four rows, it needs to work. And if you have a larger data set, it also needs to work. And if you have a different type of setup of data set, it needs to, to continue to work. So it doesn't matter the format 
or the type of data set. This needs to always works. I'm gonna right, right click here in this button and cope and I'm gonna paste in each one of the new sheets that I have. Control V, I'm gonna select this one, Control V. I'm also gonna select this, another one right here, Control V for example. Let's check if it's gonna work. Uh, second sheet here, a different data set, create chart, and I got an arrow here. And it might happen into your Excel too. And I'm gonna explain why I got this arrow. But uh, just check if your Excel either got an arrow or not. Maybe your Excel version, everything works fine and it's great. But here in my Excel version, I got an arrow. That is, for example, this chart that you can see right here does not represent this data set that I have. So this is the arrow, as you guys can see. This data set is something larger than the data set that I had before. And as you guys can see, I have here team 1, team 2, up to team 8, for example. So, 8 different teams. And I also have here round 1, 2, 3, and then the final result. But, if I take a look here in the chart, it makes no sense. Because I only have team 1 up to team 4, and only round 1 and 2. This makes no sense, because in this particular situation here, in this data set, my chart needs to be a little bit larger with more information, but uh, it doesn't work that well. Let me read it off this chart and let's check here for the third example. Create a chart and the same, same thing happens here. The chart is not properly working for me. This is happened because the Excel version. So this is why I say to you, just make sure you can check if the chart is gonna work whenever you change uh, the, the row quantities or the columns quantity, whenever you have a different type of data set, if your chart works, it's because everything is working on Excel. But here, in this scenario right here, my Excel version does not work that well. So I need to make some changes here. And to make sure I can make these changes, I'm gonna go to, for example, the developer tab and then macros. I can select here the macro that is not working properly and I can click edit, for example. And as you guys can see, all the commands that we just did with our macro is here. For example, the first thing that the macro did or does is just select the first cell, A1. Okay, it's correct. And then I have here two different movements of selection. The first one is Control Shift to the right and then Control Shift down. Okay, it's perfect. But here we have a problem in this row right here, for example. So it's going to take a chart and the source of the chart is my first spreadsheet and this is not correct because uh, if I change the spreadsheet, if I change the, the data set, not always, not always, I'm going to need to use the reference, the range as A1 up to D5, for example, like this. No, it's wrong. So the macro doesn't understand that well what I what I supposed to do with Ctrl Shift to the, to the right, Ctrl Shift down. And as I said, it depends on the Excel version. So let me just select this entire row right here, select everyone to the end here to the left, and then delete. Now with this blank line, this blank row, I can again delete it. And we're done, guys. Just this little adjustment here. I can close now this VBA page, and uh, let's see if it's gonna work. Create a chart. And yeah, look our chart right now. Now it's working properly. I have here now a lot of different columns. And yeah, I can also increase here a little bit this, this chart size. Let's check here the example tree, create a chart. And yeah, now it's correct. And the last test is the, the sheet number four, the fourth sheet, create a chart. And yeah, here we got again a correct result. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And do not forget the last step is to save this Excel spreadsheet as a Excel macro file. And to do it, instead of saving your Excel file like this, for example, .xlsx, instead of using this X here in the suffix, for example, instead you need to use M because M stands for macro. And to do it, it's pretty much easy. So we just need to click here, file, and then save as, for example, you can click here, browse, to save uh, into a folder, into your computer, for example, so browse, and doesn't matter where you're gonna save it, as long as save as type is with this following option, Excel macro enabled workbook.xlsm, okay? You need to select that option to make sure 
the macro, the VBA, all the automations that you did into your Excel is going to be saved properly. And I can click in save and we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.